Specifically, we call it exposure and response prevention. Cognitive restructuring is where we teach clients to really consider their thoughts. We might ask them, what supports your belief? Or how can you be sure that your conclusion is accurate? Now here's the important difference between using CBT for anxiety versus other disorders. Our goal is to create a neutral response, neither promoting a positive statement nor endorsing a negative one. Instead, whatever it is that I may feel when I'm anxious, I can tolerate the discomfort. That's the way I want a client to talk to themselves. Imagine you have a client who wonders, what if I didn't lock the door? The cognitive restructuring is to acknowledge their concern and accept the doubt of not knowing if they locked the door or not. But there is more than just accepting the thoughts. Accepting the feelings that accompany these thoughts is the next step. We do this through behavioral experiments. We purposely expose clients to their triggers to induce and habituate to anxiety. Their self-monitoring list of triggers allows us to begin this with their lowest ranked fear. These behavioral experiments allows the client to go into the feared situations and learn a different response. This is a really hard part of treatment for clients, but when done appropriately, they can learn very quickly. And what should that response be? It's one of strength, learning the ability to stay in the pain rather than avoiding it, and learning how to persevere when every ounce of their being is screaming to run away. When they don't run away, they learn that they are much stronger than they thought. This exciting moment is when your client gains confidence. This is the moment that I love. At this point, the goal is to continue to practice these new skills and to generalize the skills into other anxious situations in their life. Once they've gained their confidence, treatment may end. Sometimes this is in as few as six to eight sessions. And sometimes further therapy is necessary.